Yes, uh, Ashley. Good morning, sir. Good morning to you. Thank you. Uh, last week we learned about chemical properties and chemical properties of carbon. We learned about the reactions of metal oxides with carbon. Then we learned about also reaction of carbon with acids. Then also reaction of carbon with steam. Then later we learned about the oxides of carbon, uh, which are carbon, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Then we learned about carbon dioxide. Then we learned about its laboratory pre preparation. Okay, thank you, Ashley. Okay. So can we have can we have someone to take us uh, to remind us of uh, what what really happened when the carbon is reacting with uh, with oxygen. Anybody who can share with us what happens when carbon reacts with uh, with oxygen, and giving those different conditions that we talked about. Anybody? Anybody who can remind us what really happens when carbon reacts with oxygen, under the different conditions that we gave. I hope that uh, everyone has got the notes though. So if you can't remember, you can check in your notes. As per now, it is allowed. Uh, we want first to refresh our minds. Anybody? I didn't want to, uh, to choose someone. I just wanted someone to just uh, raise up uh, the hand and, and share with us. What happens when carbon reacts with oxygen? What happens when carbon reacts with oxygen? I have a feeling that everyone is now checking. Okay, Maureen. Carbon, carbon dioxide carbon monoxide are formed i beg your pardon carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide are formed okay thank you uh, isaac is asking that uh, he's not seeing anything on the screen yes there is nothing on the screen i've not shared my screen we are just uh reminding ourselves of what we studied last time before we go to a new thing uh victoria uh, Victoria just disappeared. Victoria, I want us, uh, Victoria, give us the conditions, those different conditions, how for the reaction of carbon with uh, with oxygen. Like Maureen said that uh, there is a formation of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. What are those conditions that favor the formation of carbon monoxide and also the condition that favors the formation of carbon dioxide? We can maybe talk about that. Yes, Victoria. It's fine, it's fine. I'm trying. It's alright. It's alright. Um, when carbon burns with limited amount of oxygen, carbon monoxide is formed, and when carbon burns in a lot of oxygen, carbon dioxide is formed. Okay, thank you so much. We have we have said it all. So when we have limited supply of oxygen, we form carbon monoxide. And when we have excess or plenty of oxygen, we form carbon dioxide. So we should always be able to remember such conditions because uh, they normally come in our exams. So lastly, can someone take us through the preparation of carbon dioxide in the lab? Uh, briefly, who can describe that reaction, uh, that process or that experiment? Someone just remind us the preparation of uh, carbon dioxide in the laboratory. You can just tell us what happens. There is no need of describing the, the diagram because uh, there is no how we're going to do that. So ca you can tell us what really happens in the preparation of carbon dioxide in the laboratory.
Uh, meanwhile, someone with a techno pop 2F, please rename your device. We want to know your name. I think that is Gabriel. No? Techno pop 2F, please rename. So I'm going to help you. I write there unknown so that we can change it. Unknown. So if you see unknown on your screen, just know. Uh, yes, Angela. It is prepared by the by the reaction of the dilute hydrochloric acid and marble chips. Okay. Uh, run the dilute hydrochloric acid in the flask through a funnel. Then add a delivery cube. The gas may be collected over water. Mm -hmm. The observation is that every, every gas is given off. Okay, is that good? Okay. okay. Angela, thank you. So what Angela was saying is that uh, you get uh, dilute hydrochloric acid, then you add it onto the marble chips, uh, where we say that the marble chips are also another form of calcium carbonate. Uh, then we shall have a effervescence of a callous gas, and we pass it through uh, water, remove hydrochloric fumes, then from there, we pass the gas through concentrated sulfuric acid where it is dried. And uh, then lastly, we collect the gas by downward delivery or what we call upward displacement of, of air. So that's what we looked at. So before we left, we were supposed to watch a video of which we didn't watch. So today I want us first watch that video very fast. I'm going to play it once. I'm going to play that video once. So please. So Isaac, you were asking that the screen is black. Now it is not going to be black anymore. I'm going to share with you the video. We have hydrochloric acid here. And so if you still remember very well, I remember telling you that uh, we can call carbon dioxide, we can also call it carbon four oxide, like I demonstrated. Uh, in the last lesson, I hope you still remember. Yes, good morning, Gavion. So, in case you hear someone talking about carbon dioxide in our video, it is the same as carbon dioxide. So, let's pay attention. I'm playing the video once. Uh, that is not me in the video, please. We have hydrochloric acid here and calcium carbonate. They are used to prepare carbon dioxide in the lab. So when we want to prepare carbon dioxide in the lab, we use calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. When the two react, they will form carbon dioxide. There will be also water formed and calcium chloride and the hydrochloric acid produces fumes of hydrochloric acid so those fumes we call them hydrogen chloride gas so the fumes they are removed using this sodium hydrogen carbonate and the drying agent that we use in the experiment is concentrated sulfuric 6 acid 
The concentrated sulfuric six acid is used as a drying agent. Another drying agent that can be used in this uh, experiment is anhydrous calcium chloride. Then the gas is collected by downward delivery because it is denser than air. Let us open the tap of this dropping panel to see the reaction. Can you see carbon dioxide gas being formed? How many of you can see the carbon dioxide gas? You are only seeing bubbles of a gas. Is that true? But you don't know whether the gas is carbon dioxide, isn't it? Because we have so many colorless gases. So to know whether this gas is carbon dioxide, you have to test. Carbon four uh, oxide does not support combustion. Therefore, it puts off a burning splint. It will put off a burning splint. That is how you will know whether the gas has been formed. So this is our in a gas jar containing carbon dioxide. It is put off. So look. The wooden split goes off. Why does it go off? Combustion. So that is how we prepare carbon dioxide in the lab. I don't know why you can't see. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Shina. Shina, unmute. Excuse me, Chief. Yes, please. I have not understood the procedures. No, we already have the procedure. We had the procedure last time. Today I was just showing you some video, but we already have the procedure. Okay. Okay. Uh, Shina, you can mute. You mute yourself. All right. Yeah, uh, Jacqueline. Jacqueline, Jacqueline. Mm. Jacqueline, unmute. Yes, please. Jacqueline. Mm. I see your hand up. Same Jacqueline, you are not talking, so uh, let me mute you. Uh, let me check in the chat. Uh, I don't know why some people are not saying, but uh, it could be your device, so I don't know. Because others are seen. Okay, so what I really want to emphasize is this. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this is the arrangement of uh, our apparatus when we are preparing carbon dioxide. Or what what is holding carbon for oxide. So here, 
this is where we put this is where we put hydrochloric acid dilute hydrochloric acid uh, then in this flask we are putting there uh, we are putting there marble chips or calcium carbonate uh, then here we are having concentrated uh, potassium uh, potassium hydroxide or we can also have their water to absorb the hydrochloric acid fumes or what what is calling uh, what is calling uh, hydrogen chloride uh, then here we are having a drying agent uh, which is concentrated sulfuric acid concentrated sulfuric acid uh, whether for him is calling it uh, concentrated sulfuric six acid but it's concentrated sulfuric acid uh, then here we are having this is what we call a gas jar this is what we call a gas jar and these are what we call uh, the tubes uh, but these ones are made of glass not rubber these ones are made of glass not rubber so that is the procedure what you do release the hydrochloric acid from the funnel this is a tap funnel because of having this tap and then on to the bubble chips in the flask then we shall form effervescence or bubbles of aqueous gas that are seen entering if you are to look very clearly you can see that you can see that this first tube this one here it is entering in the solution it is entering then the second tube which is this one it is starting from here not inside the solution so that is how even our diagram look like, looks like this tube that is taking off the gas is supposed to be is supposed to be off the solution the same thing you can see that should bring the gas it is entering the drying agent and here we are having uh this one is from oh it is off the the drying agent so like that so this is the setup this is how we also have it in our diagram the whole of this uh, this experiment can be performed it can be performed in our ordinary ordinary lab yes Jovia. so why does one tube go into the solution and one does not uh, that when the light must enter the solution that is supposed to dry it and to make sure that the gas goes off or doesn't remain in the solution that's why we have uh in the gas to off not inside us because if it remains inside the gas will remain inside the solution do not move up so that's why one tube has to enter and bring the gas then now that is saying the gas must be off Irene, Irene, it is your turn. <coughs> Shami. No, Mister, do you have any other drying agent apart from sulfuric acid? Okay, the video is uh, is from concentric acid. You can use an hydrocalcium chloride, hydrochloride. Say an hydrate doesn't contain food solution. So we can also use that. But what we use an hydrocalcium chloride, uh, once we use, we shall not use the flask. We shall not use the flask uh, for it. that you shall use a youtube yeah just your my network i think it was a bit stubborn 
But I was saying that apart from carb considered sulfuric acid, we can use anhydrous calcium chloride. Okay, so I mean, allow me go what we're supposed to come for today. So what is up there? Uh, we need to look at. So that is uh, this uh, day's lesson. And uh, my name is um, also, like I said before, and our hand is compound. And uh, the objective is uh, to have known before the end of this lesson. This is what we expect and describe uh, by preparation of uh, then we should also be explain the chemical reactions of carbonate that is with uh, oxygen uh, lime water that we call calcium hydroxide and also sodium hydroxide so by the end of uh, this lesson we should be at least be able to explain all these they are not very many so we should try and see So having looked at carbon dioxide, we look at odorless gas. Uh, that's why in our video I was asking, can we be able to see what is uh, being formed? Or can we be able to see carbon dioxide? All of us, until when they're using a band, clean that out. So this is the carbon gas. And we also say it is odorless. Uh, what do we mean when we say odorless? It means it has no smell and is uh, uh, Remember, this is one point. Some of you like uh, reading it in too many, but this is one point. Uh, then secondly, it does not burn. It does not burn and does not support burning. And that is why we also say that once you put a burning splint, the fire will be put out. So it doesn't support burning or what we call combustion. And it is because of its density, it is also used as fire extinguisher. It is also used as fire extinguisher, or we can say it is because it displaces oxygen. Uh, we are saying that. Uh, it is denser. So, band for diagram that can. So, this so what do we mean by being or displacing? Assuming that this is our gas. This is our gas jump. Which is with oxygen. Our gas there is a half or which is being there upwards. So here we are saying that this is air, that oxygen, the arrow. You can see that it is being in a direction. Then, then the carbon dioxide, it is this one entering down. So once it has displaced all the air or all the oxygen, then the kernel will be put out. The reason carbon dioxide does not support, does not uh, burning. Uh, Isaac is saying that he didn't understand odorless. I said the word odorless means that it has no smell. It has no, no smell. Uh, then I'm seeing a hand. Yes, uh, someone. Excuse me, sir. I can't hear you. Mm, it could be. It could I can't be hear you. Uh, you check your device. It could be your network. Uh, 
A ver, Che, con May. A ver, me acuerdo a China. Diga vos a la SEM. A la SEM. No, I've not understood the point because of its dust. Okay. Uh, what I'm saying is that when we say it has a higher density, it means that it is heavier than oxygen. So once we apply it, once we put it where there is oxygen, the oxygen is going to be displaced. In other words, oxygen, the position of the oxygen will be taken up by uh, by uh, by carbon dioxide because it is heavier or we can say it is stronger than oxygen in this case. It is going to take the position of oxygen. So where we have the oxygen, carbon dioxide will come and take up that uh, volume or that space. And once that one is done, when all the air has been displaced or driven off from the gas jar, we shall only have carbon dioxide in the gas jar. And we say that carbon dioxide does not support burning. So what will happen is that our burning candle here, the one we are having inside, it will stop burning because the gas present does not support burning at all. Okay. I hope it is clear now. So it is done than air. This one can also be seen here in this diagram. We are saying it is denser than air, whereby it is displacing air from the gas jar. And that's why we collect it, we can say. And that is why the gas is collected by downward delivery method. And that is why the gas is collected by downward delivery method. If you are check when, if you are check when in uh, our last diagram, we had uh, we cannot, I think we can also check in, uh, in our video. We can check in our video and see how that one can, came in. So what do I mean by downward delivery? Uh, you can see that the downward delivery, that is when the delivery is coming down. So we can see our tube. Our tube is going down like this. It is going down. That's why we call it downwards. Uh, delivery because our tube is moving down meaning that the gas is moving in in this direction it is moving down if the gas was moving up then we would have that the gas jar hanging and our tube now would be facing up our tube that is bringing the gas would be uh, facing up. It would be like that. But since the gas is denser, our tube is coming down like this. So this is what we call downwards uh, delivery. And this method is used to collect the gases which are denser than air. Which are denser than air. Remember these gas, uh, gas jars they are used at first they are filled with air so when they have air inside and the gas come then the air is forced to move out yes ashley um, so i would like to know which of those gases are collected by upward and delivery method uh, the gases apart from uh, apart from uh, apart yeah. from carbon dioxide we can have uh, sulfur dioxide uh, we can also have sulfur trioxide uh, we can also have hydrogen chloride gas we can also have chlorine gas uh, and so on okay. that is apart from carbon dioxide so then that is, yes please uh, what about upward delivery uh, upward delivery we have uh, hydrogen 
Okay. Uh, we also have uh, ammonia oxygen. gas. Uh, oxygen is not uh, by that method, it is by a serine because uh, it's density is that of uh, almost mm. equal to that of air. So we normally use a syringe because of its density, okay. it's close to that of air. And Let those gases can, can be created by those methods when they are dry. When they are dry, but when they are not dry, they can be created over water or over brine. But if they are dry, we can use the, uh, such methods. Is that clear? Yes. All right. So that is it. So we continue. So another property is that the gas is denser than air. So if they ask you why is the gas, why is carbon dioxide collected by downward delivery? It is because the gas is denser than air. Yes, Jovia? What you mean that when the gas is less denser than than here, you just use the upwards delivery. Yeah, when, the, when we say the gas is less dense than air, it means that the air now is heavier than that gas, so we use upward delivery. Okay. Okay. Uh, you can lower, lower your hand, okay, thank you. Uh, then again, the gas is slightly soluble in water. The gas is slightly soluble in, in water. What do we mean by saying slightly? It means that a small percentage of it can only dissolve in, in water. And when that happens, and when that happens, and when that happens, we form a weak acid. That is how we form carbonic acid. So we shall have carbon dioxide. Uh, let me use a different color. We shall have carbon dioxide. Uh, we shall have carbon dioxide gas. Uh, reacting with water, that is after putting it in water. So water is uh, H2O. It is a liquid. Uh, then we shall form a weak acid. Uh, since we are forming a weak acid, we shall have a reversible reaction. So we shall have this kind of uh, uh, arrows. Uh, this one, they show that the gas, that the acid is, uh, is weak. So we form carbonic acid. It is one of the examples of weak acids, if you still remember. The ones which partially ionize in aqueous solution. So this is what happens when the gas or carbon dioxide is dissolved in water. So it is just in water. Say it, a small percent dissolves in water. Uh, this equation must be miss, might be missing in this presentation, but it will be part of the notes. So in case you sit there, that is what happens. Uh, we form a weak acid, which is carbonic acid. Yes, Joanita. Yes, sure. that, that, that is a because they kind of disturb me. How you come to the conclusion? Uh, uh, which conclusion? About this equation? Yes. The, there is something you said that, that disturbs you. What is that? equation maybe we, we we shall we shall need to have a, a lesson on that because it's a it's a big thing i can't explain the, the these equation is in just one minute so okay. i don't know whether you mind but uh, we can have another session later or we can organize for another session then we have those equations how they are formed and how they are balanced okay, okay thank you 
Uh, then uh, Shami. Excuse me, sir. When do we use reversible arrows? We use is at least of all, uh, whenever we like this the formation of a weak acid. Have that. So meaning that uh, this acid is a, uh, it is weak. To show that we use the reversible arrows. But we shall look at other reactions. We shall give for uh, have those reversible reactions in the near future. Uh, then uh, Sherina. Uh, Sherina. It's like my boy is uh, not saying anything. Should I say the understanding or? Let's uh, let me ask like this one. Aaron. Aaron Aaron. Aaron and your friend. So YouTube has captured that. So you use it in the future. Uh, let me look for another gentleman. Uh, let me see. Eh, now so good, now so good. The lesson is about carbon and its compounds. Okay, so let's continue. So our point here is carbon dioxide is lightly soluble in water, and <clears throat> yeah, we are trying to show what happens uh, then also turns moist ink carbon dioxide turns moist uh, blitmas paper pink indicating that it is weakly acidic indicating that it is weakly acidic so if you don't want to use the word moist here uh, you can use the word wet wet can work or if you don't want to use the word wet you can use the word damp a damp so carbon dioxide turns moist blue it must paper Pink, indicating that it is weakly acidic. If it was a strong acid, to turn it red. If it was a strong acid, to turn it to red. Mm, yes, Pavin. Uh, someone is asking. Message is asking for the last slides. Uh, I think I, I will send. I will send. I will post the slides in our. In our our classroom so don't worry about that okay jovia you are saying that you have a question raise up your hand so that i can easily get you jovia. okay yeah sometimes when they are writing carbon monox carbon carbon oxide they put a variance of four and sometimes they put two why uh, it is because uh, i don't know whether you attend the first lesson but it's because uh, carbon has two valences carbon has two valences it has four and also it has two uh, but most of us most of us are used to have to eat having four but it has two valences four and and two so the four, the fourth, uh, the valence of four, it is the one which forms the very stable compounds. So that's why we are used to having four. So if I have carbon here with the four, and maybe with uh, an oxide, so here by one, here by two. So when we switch valences, uh, that is when we form, uh, that is when we form carbon dioxide. Uh, then when it has two, and also an oxide of uh, has a valence, 
I remember when we were looking at the formation of these millers, uh, we said that if the valences are the same, you just ignore. Or if I say here by one, here by one, and we have one one, we are not supposed to write the one. So that's why we came up with carbon monoxide. Why are we saying mono? Mono means one. So we are having only one oxide. A di means two. So we are having only two oxides. Jovia, is that clear? Yes. Okay, thank you. So the last question and we proceed. We need to look at something new. There is someone I want us to cover it. So this one. Yes, uh, Shina? Excuse me, teacher. I'm a bit right. confused with, with the what? With the first system for you to be preparing. In, in preparing carbon dioxide and the bubble, mm -hmm. I don't remember the name. Teacher, can you? Which name do, that you are not remembering? The name of the first chemical when you are beginning the preparation of carbon dioxide. Okay, okay. The first chemical we are having. Uh, we are having uh, so we are having we are having this so the first chemical here it is a dichloric acid what we are having in this funnel and I said this is the top funnel uh, then inside the flask here we are having marble chips marble chips or what we can call calcium calcium uh carbonate okay then here we either can have uh, potassium hydroxide or we can have water inside here uh, then here we are having a drying agent which is concentrated sulfuric acid and lastly inside here we have carbon dioxide gas that we are preparing i hope it is clear now Okay, so Moesu, you're welcome. Uh, let's continue. So from there, let's look at chemical properties. Here we are going to look at the reactions of carbon dioxide. Remember that was also one of our objectives. We want by, by the end of this lesson to be knowing how to explain the chemical properties of carbon dioxide. Some of them, not all of them, of course, because we shall look at a few. One, this is the reaction. This is the reaction with the lime water. This is the reaction with lime water, or what we can call calcium hydroxide. So, in case you happen to see lime water, it is the same as calcium hydroxide, and that is why I put it in uh, in bold so that you can all see it. Once again, lime water is the same as calcium hydroxide. So we are saying that. Carbon dioxide turns lime water or calcium hydroxide milk. Carbon dioxide turns calcium hydroxide milk. So what do we mean? Uh, the color of milk, I hope all of us know it, it is white. So it will turn to white. It will turn to, to white. Uh, Agatha, Agatha, maybe you can tell me if you have just joined or if you have been around from the beginning. Uh, let me know so that I can see how I can help you. So we are saying it turns me okay. So when you happen, if the question comes and is asking for the observation, this is what you write. Okay. Now, so guy, you've just joined, so it will be a bit hard now to explain everything from the beginning. Uh, but I request that you can pay attention to what is already being said. Uh, then we shall meet in our classroom, then I explain more. And even on this slide, there is my contact. You can WhatsApp me there, then I can see how to help you. Or you can use the WhatsApp group for senior too. Still, I can attend to you. Uh, thank you. So... Here, if you ha happen to be asked the observation, they will ask you to write the equation 
and the observation when carbon dioxide reacts with lime water or calcium hydroxide so calcium hydroxide is a <coughs> is a color solution calcium hydroxide is a color solution so we say that if i'm drawing the observation i will say that the color solution the colors the colorless solution the colorless solution the colorless solution of of lime water of lime water or calcium hydroxide turns turns milk turns that would be my observation and that is what will happen if you try it in the lab and we are saying this is the formation of this is the formation of insoluble calcium carbonate which is a white precipitate so we can say it turns milk or we can say it turns to a white a white precipitate precipitate uh, a precipitate is a solid so it, and it can have uh, different colors it can be blue it can be white it can be uh, it can be yellow it, it can be anything it can be any color so this would be our observation <clears throat> i hope i'm clear so this precipitate that is formed this one we are having here all this milk thing that we are forming it is the calcium or the insoluble calcium carbonate it is the insoluble calcium carbonate that is the one that is white uh, precipitate or the one that is that looks milk it is white the word milk comes from the word milk okay someone is asking me uh, when you check on the first slide i'll show you the first slide then you'll be able to get what you want i'm responding to adibaku and also isaac 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 i will share the first slide then you answer you get your answer our faith is asking about the reaction we are going there so this is the this is the observation that is what i wanted to first emphasize and uh, then from there we can look at the equation so this is our equation this is our equation so this is the color solution which is calcium hydroxide uh, reacting with carbon dioxide and this is now the one we call a white uh, this is what we call the white precipitate a white uh, precipitate uh, let me see why i can write it here a white precipitate white precipitate it sounds like a Uganda word and and water and you need cross check uh, if to see if the equation is balanced if it is not then we can balance it uh, but according to me it is balanced so members this is the white precipitate uh this one here uh, this is the white precipitate or the milky thing that is being formed yes surrender ranjan please unmute so we are time but hello yes please i'm not hearing sorry about that so let's continue i want us to be following this step so here we are forming calcium carbonate and in this case we are having limited oxygen rather than limited carbon dioxide limited carbon dioxide or we are having less carbon dioxide so let's see if we have excess however when excess carbon dioxide let's mark this however when excess carbon dioxide is bubbled through the solution of lime water the white precipitate dissolves making the solution to appear clear making the solution to appear clear 
So what do we mean? I request that those who have questions, you can wait a bit. It is a chemistry, it is a chemistry. Wait a bit. So, uh, those who are asking, you can just wait a bit and we have this uh, this equation. So the first equation, the one we had before, when we have, we first had our carbon dioxide, our carbon dioxide are reacting uh, with uh, calcium hydroxide the first scenario the one we just looked at so here we formed here we formed calcium carbonate and we say this is a white precipitate and of course the plus water uh, because of time i'm not writing the chemical formulas the physical uh, states so we are saying that however when excess carbon dioxide is bubbled through the lime water, then we shall form a clear solution. Or the solution will become clear. So we shall have a continuation of this. So to have excess carbon dioxide, we shall have calcium carbonate, which is already formed, and water, and water. Then we add the excess carbon dioxide. Then we add the excess carbon dioxide. Uh, this one will give us calcium. This one will give us calcium hydrogen uh, carbonate. Calcium hydrogen carbonate. Calcium hydrogen uh, carbonate. So here we are having, I can say here we are having less oxygen, rather less carbon dioxide. Then here we are having excess, here excess carbon dioxide. So the second equation, it is the continuation from the first equation. Uh, <clears throat> Brianna is asking why do we put uh, calcium hydroxide in brackets? Uh, that is how we write the chemical formula of calcium hydroxide because uh, in this case calcium has a valency of 2 and hydroxide has a valency of 1. So that's why the two can come in. So we have put, we need to put these brackets uh, so that we can cater for the two. Okay, now let me now pick the hands. Okay, actually, I think I will have one minute remaining. Actually, oh, uh, I wanted to know in which state is high, is the calcium hydroxide in? It? In which state is? Uh, calcium hydroxide. Which state you've not been putting under state? It's yeah. yeah, because of time I wasn't being put in. But carbon dioxide is a this is a yes. It is a car, it's so it is aqueous. Okay. You can say aqueous. Then this is a solid. Uh this is a liquid. Okay, uh, then this sure. one is aqueous. All right. Okay. Hey, now, so guy, yes, I will send the work there. Yes. All right. So. Formation of which is a soluble compound. So this is the one I wrote before having calcium carbonate plus form a solid. So the next reaction will be in carbon sodium. 
So I'll click the next via the different um, platforms that we have because of time. So I'll not explain this. I'll explain it when I come in the next lesson. So that is our our lesson today. I remember we are sponsored by Edify Uganda. Uh, someone is asking if it is the only property. No, we have many, but today we have looked at a few. Okay, so that is all. I'm going to entertain only two.